I don't want to say that I told you so that this was going to happen, but like I kind of did. That's it. That's my intro. Hi, I'm Amanda. You're watching Swan Entertainment. And today we are talking about the reception and the follow up events of the last duel from Ridley Scott bombing at the box office. I will say, I tried to see this movie. I tried to be good, okay? I tried to be thorough and I tried to see this movie. I could not find it. I tried to find it in a theater, tried to find it on demand. I tried to find it on illegal streaming sites and I still could not find it, okay? So Ridley Scott, I tried. I was gonna sit here and be like, oh, I love the movie. I could not do that. <laughs> Cause I couldn't go and see it, okay? Okay, but that's the start of this. But first, let me take a second and tell you about the sponsor of today's video, Native. Native is a returning sponsor here on the channel and you usually hear me talking about their aluminum free deodorants, but this time I am talking to you about their body washes. Now I work out pretty regularly, so I take showers pretty regularly and I need a body wash that's not gonna dry me out, that has good clean ingredients. Native sent me their lavender and rose, which is some of their classic collection, but they also sent me two of their holiday only scents, their cherry and vanilla macaron, and sugar cookie. Please ignore me huffing my body wash. It smells like vanilla. It smells amazing. All their body washes give you a luxurious foaming lather. They're sulfate, phthalate, and dye free. I would hope that you hold yourself in really good standards and you should hold your body wash to good standards as well. But like I said at the start, Native has way more to offer, including aluminum free deodorants and toothpaste and the like. So be sure to go and check out everything else that Native has to offer on top of checking out your body washes. Three body washes are usually $24 but if you use the link down below and code SWELL3, you can get them for just $14. That's 40% off. This is a limited time offer, so don't forget to get yours as soon as you can. Thank you to Native for sponsoring this video. So sometime last year, I made a video about how Trolls World Tour was going to be changing the landscape of media and specifically movie releases for the rest of time, between uh, Trolls World Tour and COVID mainly, but it was the reception to Trolls World Tour. I'll link that video down below. But basically Trolls World Tour did a dumb amount of money on, on demand because of COVID. They had basically done all of their promotions and then they got pulled from theaters and theaters got shut down because of COVID. And then they ended up making a hundred million dollars on On Demand, which is unprecedented already, but considering On Demand, the studios take a higher percentage than when it does well in theaters. Like basically a hundred million in On Demand is better than a hundred million in theaters, okay? okay. Okay, this caused Universal to basically say, moving forward, we're gonna start doing in-theater and on-demand releases same day. We're not gonna respect, I think it was like a 60-day window at the time. I'll have to go back and watch that video of mine. But basically there was a lot of back and forth and then AMC and uh, Regal were like, okay, cool, we're not gonna show Universal movies if they're not gonna respect the window. That was the main point of that video. But in that same video, I talked about how I thought this was a bad idea for theaters wise because post COVID, and even, I don't know where I'm gonna get post COVID. I don't, I don't think we're gonna get it. One of my points in that video was that it was dumb that the theater chains were saying that they were not going to show universal films if they weren't respecting the window was because I expected that post COVID there was going to be a lot of people who were not comfortable going to the movies yet or were not comfortable taking their families to the movies and spending X amount of money on tickets, spending X amount of money on food and things like that. And uh, unless they were going to see a big name movie. And I think I used my comparison was Saint Maud and then Black Widow. I think those were my comparisons. Like less people are going to, you know, take that risk or spend that money to go to a theater for something like Saint Maud when they can go and do that for Black Widow. I'd basically done a subset at that point and said that I hope hope that this doesn't lead to a, you know, le less movies being made by smaller studios and things like that. And that, you know, because there's just no money there, you know, it's not even like, oh, we want them to become billion dollar movies. No, it's, you want to, you would like a return on investment so that you can t continue to make those movies and, you know, continue to tell different stories and things like that. And I, I do think that might've been what happened here. There's gonna be, you know, your big superhero movies and then you're going to be, you know, your last duels. 
and some are just not going to do as well. But that was my point of that, is that I, I do think that we were gonna start seeing more movies struggle. And I, I still don't think, like I look at the numbers from recent movies, we're at the end of November as I'm filming this. And like, I look at numbers for movies and I look at numbers from five years ago or two years ago, even pre-pandemic, like we're not at a normal level anymore. Nothing, I don't think that there's normal movie levels back anymore, especially for in theater releases. I truly think that we're still kind of seeing a lot of fluctuation. I truly don't think we really know what like a normal good box office number is right now anymore. The only thing we can really look at is like, are they making their budget back on the budget of the film and then the budget on marketing? When we look at that, and then you look at a movie like The Last Duel that was a hundred million to make, yeah, it's not gonna be ideal. But I mean, I think there are a lot of movies like that right now. Like there was a lot of highly anticipated movies that I saw TikTok and other, platforms obsessing over and they're just not doing well in theaters right now. And personally, okay, hi, I talk about movies. It's a subset of my job. I don't focus on one thing, but I talk about movies in a lot of my content. I love movies. I try to make as much time as possible for me to go and see movies in theaters because I just, as much as I love my big TV, I just like the theater experience, okay? And if I don't, you know, spend too much money on snacks in order to go see a movie, I think I die a little inside. But even then, there were so many movies coming out at the end of right now, especially because I think a lot of movies that, you know, were supposed to be coming out last year, uh, in 2020 that got pushed to 2021 or got pushed to 2022, a lot of them kind of fell around this time. And so a lot of people had been planning to go see these big movies and things like that. And so a movie like The Last Duel, I think just kind of fell through the cracks. Let me read you the uh, synopsis for The Last Duel, because again, I did not get the chance to go see this movie. I wanted to. I very much wanted to. I love Jodie Comer. I love a lot of the actors that were in this movie and I love historical films. I really do. And so I was looking forward to this movie. I just didn't have the time. Really, I didn't. Like even, even now in November, this movie came out at the end of October. In November, I was doing NaNoWriMo and I, I, I finished, yay, hey, I was doing a lot. And even then, like the movies that I had to go see, like I saw Clifford before I saw The Eternals. I still have not seen The Eternals. I have not seen The Last Night in Soho and I've been looking forward to that movie for a while. Even I, someone who literally works for myself, has media consumption and going to see movies as a subset of my career, I could not make time to go see this movie. And even when I could make time, it was no longer in theaters and it's not available. So I, I just think, I don't know, I think that there was a lot of things at play here. But anyway, let me read you the synopsis of The Last Duel before I read you this article that's about this podcast that Ridley Scott did. Ugh. Set in medieval France, the film stars Damon as Jean, I'm gonna butcher all of these, day, mm, a night who challenges his friend Squire Jacques to a judicial duel for Jean's, Jean, wow, Jean's wife, Marguerite, accuses Jacques of essaying her. I'm trying to not be triggering. The events leading up to the duel are divided into three chapters, reflecting the perspectives of the three main characters. Affleck also stars in a supporting role as Count Pierre de I'm so sorry, oh my God. The thing here is, is the essay thing. There are people who don't wanna see that, you know? And it's like, it's, it's, I don't think that we, that it's, that, mm. listen. I mean, I would like to know how graphic that gets because for my own peace of mind, there's things I don't like to watch, you know? I don't want to see in certain films. And I knew the plot of that going in, obviously. I saw the trailer. I knew that there was something that's happening. But I mean, I didn't know how graphic that scene got. I know what I can handle and what I can't. But I also know I have a variety of friends who could not handle literally even the topic of that in a film. Whether they've been through that or not, some people don't want to see that depicted at all. And that's fine. They don't have to go see it. It's not like, woe is me, no one wanted to go see my R film. Like, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> the film received positive reviews from critics who praised the performances of the cast and production values and likened it to Akira Kurosawa film Rashomon uh, 1950. However, it bombed box office grossing just 
29 million against the production budget of 100 million. So it's broken into three chapters. And that aspect I had heard about was the three chapters and like the different perspectives. I love that in media. I love when you can kind of see like trying to learn the different story aspects from the different people involved. So that alone, I was going to go see this movie and I just, I couldn't and I still can't. I'm trying to see it. Sorry, I'm trying to read more of the plot itself. Okay, sorry, I need to read this here. Upon meeting uh, Marguerite, Jacques falls in love with her and becomes convinced that she loves him after she shows him kindness. Ah, oh, God, I, I <laughs> men, oh. How do you know she likes you back, bro? I don't know, she says hi every morning. <clears throat> Jacques chases Marguerite up to her bedchamber and essays her. Before leaving, he advises her not to tell her husband. That tells me that it's there. Um, let me read you uh, this article. So this article is from The Hollywood Reporter and it's talking about a podcast episode that Ridley Scott did talking about his two recent movies, including uh, The Last Duel and House of Gucci, which I saw, I liked a lot. Um, I do think that some things could have been better, but I'm not here to talk about that. I think you wanted to tell two different stories and you, you you wanted to tell the one about the murder and then the one about, you know, the Gucci family losing their access to the Gucci company. And I, I think you rushed the murder plot and I, I think it was just clunky. Like, I, I, I don't, I'm not complaining about the pacing of the entire movie because though it's so long, I liked it for the most part. I just do think that like you could have paced the ending better. Like if you would literally had just kind of used the murder as like a plot device versus just like, oh my God, look at this thing. Like, I think that would have been better. Anyway, <laughs> Ridley Scott pinned the last duel bombing on apathetic millennials. <laughs> See, the funny thing is, is between both of these, we can say that there is a common thread. Same director, both had Adam Driver. Only one had Lady Gaga. So I mean that alone, <laughs> we can see which one would have done better in the box office that alone no offense to jodie comer or anything like that like i said i adore her i just the, for them like we're looking at the masses and the comparisons and things like that ridley scott knows who to blame for his epic the last duel bombing and it's not disney which he contends did a great job promoting the historical drama i disagree though i love the posters I, like i love the billboards that i saw here i i think that some of the I don't know. I think that some of the promotional material could have been better. The Oscar nominated director dropped by Mark Marone's WTF podcast for an episode published Monday in which he discussed his iconic career. Marone said he was impressed that Scott had two enormous pictures out this year, The Last Duel and House of Gucci. When it arrived exclusively in theaters in late October, 20th Century's The Last Duel starring everyone I've already said, cratered. Scott told Marone he was somewhat concerned that Disney acquired Fox Studio would undersell the graphic film, but that was not the case. Disney did a fantastic promotion job. The bosses loved the movie. I was concerned it was not for them. I think they could have done better promotion, honestly. I, I really only ever saw the posters around LA. I live out here, okay? I live out in LA. I saw the billboards. I saw the posters. When I went to theaters, I saw the same trailer three or four times before other movies. And then I saw a couple Twitter ads, that's it. I, I didn't see anything. I think promoting on TikTok is something that everyone needs to be doing right now. I know a lot of you guys hate TikTok. A lot of you do. I really think that that's the smartest thing you can do. Also, some TikTokers will ride or die for a movie. A lot of TikTokers, I'm not just kidding. Like I, you give them an early access screener and they will pitch the shit out of your movie. We're talking about apathetic millennials. Okay, let me read the quote before I move forward. I think what it boils down to what we've got today are the audiences who are brought up on these fucking cell phones. The millennials do not ever want to be taught anything unless you're told it on a cell phone. And I'm pitching TikTok. I mean, I'm not helping things, but I'm a cusper. I'm technically Gen Z, so don't get mad at me. This is a broad stroke, but I think we're dealing with it right now with Facebook, Scott added. This is a misdirection that has happened where it's given the wrong kind of confidence to this latest generation, I think. Scott said he stood firmly by the last duel and the decision-making process that the studio was solved throughout. That's the call you make, he said, of his undertaking the process. That's the call Fox made. We all thought it was a terrific script and we made it. You can't win all the time. I've never had one regret on any movie I've ever made. Nothing. I learned very early on to be your own critic. The only thing you should really have an opinion on is what you just did. Walk away, make sure you're happy and don't look back. That's me. Okay. I agree with that philosophy. I think that I am my own critic and I also think that I need to be my best, most big cheerleader, okay? See this little fucker? That's me, hee <laughs> hee. 
We got promotions. I'm gonna put my flipping associate's degrees. I have two of them. They're gonna go up there, okay? I think you need to be your biggest cheerleader and your biggest critic because the only person you can ever hope to make proud is yourself. I am firmly of that belief. Um, I don't get the whole phone thing. <laughs> okay, someone broke it down really well. Cause like I said, there was a lot of movies coming out right now. The Last Duel, it's the, uh, uh, someone shoots, it's the Andre meme. Ridley Scott, a limited release versus Bond and Dune. Why would Marvel and millennials do this? <laughs> because allegedly uh, there was also another thing with Marvel being brought up by Ridley Scott. I don't know. I think, I think that that's just a gotcha question. I want, I mean, who gives a shit, frankly, what these people think of Marvel movies? Who cares? I need my favorite director to respect that I like Captain America. Who gives a shit? <laughs> I don't know why journalists are, and reporters are asking these big name Hollywood guys and other directors why, what they think of Marvel movies. Who cares? Really? I know they're just doing it because they know people are going to talk about it. You can like multiple types of movies and not everyone's going to like your stuff. But I agree with this. Like, you know, like I said, uh, there was a lot of other movies going on right now. And like, again, the same thing I said in my video last year, if I am a person, if I had children, or, well, I would not take my my kids to go see The Last Duel, frankly. If I were, you know, setting up a movie night with friends and we were all gonna go to the movie theaters, um, the movies that I could arguably talk my friends into go seeing are Dune or Bond. It's not gonna be The Last Duel because unless like I, do I have any friends that are into history like I am? I mean, abstractly, I don't think so. My friends are science people. I've got all the STEM bitches behind me. <laughs> they don't care about history all that much. Oh, this is from Adam Ellis. Um, Adam is the one who is an artist and I do like his art, but he's also the one who did the, uh, you know, the dead kid thing on Twitter. Like he had a dead kid ghost coming in and like, I, I don't, he just sold the movie rights to that, I think. I don't like how you can just like stop doing the fake ghost kid thing. I don't, I don't think you can do that. But he said, I'm a millennial and I've seen 31 movies in theaters in the past five months. The last duel wasn't one of them because it looked boring. We're not apathetic. We just value our time like anybody else. Market your movie better, you old crusty mummy. See, I don't get the apathy. See, the apathetic thing that's throwing me off because I mean, were you marketing your movie to millennials or are you marketing it to like boomers and older millennials? Like, I mean, okay, I'm, I'm 24, I'm a cusper. I am technically Gen Z when you look at the charts, but because I'm 24, that stresses some people out. So they stick me with millennials because they don't like thinking of Gen Z as adults. Who are you, are you talking about Gen Z? Is that what, why millennials? I'm trying to understand why you're targeting millennials. I thought we were past just blaming millennials for everything. Everyone that I know who has seen this movie, who I've spoken to or I've seen talk about this movie, other media reviewers, movie film reviewers and all of that, they all like the movie. They think it's very good. So I do think that this was just a marketing error. I got invited to an early screening of House of Gucci. That's how I saw it. Did they not, are we not doing that for House of, the House of Duel, the last duel, like maybe this is just, I really think this could have been done better because you can't get around Gucci marketing, okay? You just can't. Like you got Lady Gaga and Adam Driver boning, okay? You've got Lady Gaga, TikTok took control of the, I mean, I don't consider myself a particularly ethical person, but I am fair. Okay, TikTok got that immediately. TikTok did the work for you there. I truly think that if you had figured out a better way to market The Last Duel, TikTok would have carried this. And it's like, you can't say that it's the violence because people love fucking violence. <laughs> the violence against women, that's the, that's the issue here, in my opinion. But I mean, how do you market that? The 2014 era Jezebel-ish takes on The Last Duel are especially wrongheaded because they make the mistake of thinking Adam Driver could be in a dude's rock flick. Staggering misread of Adam Driver and his culture Malay. Malu? Malay. I have no idea if I'm reading that right. Adam Driver and Adam Driver movies are not for guys. Fair. I do think that Adam Driver is for the girls and the gays. I do believe that firmly. I think that's why he did so well in House of Gucci. I thought he was adorable in most of the movie, <laughs> frankly. Jodie Comer as well. She's for the girls. She really is. Have you seen Killing Eve? She's she's for the girls. Someone uh, commented, a very valid take in my opinion. Um, it's a pretty fair bet that the only people that did go see The Last Duel were millennials that were horny for Adam Driver in a suit of armor. Fair. 
who don't ever want to be taught anything unless you told it on the cell phone. See, I don't get why you can have that opinion, Scott. I, I'm just, I'm really trying to understand what's going on here. It's one thing to be like, okay, we've got a period piece and then we got another period piece, but like violence and sexy outfits and Lady Gaga looking hot as shit, frankly, the entire movie. I'm trying to think why you're going full, like blame the technology. I don't get that. I truly don't think House of Gucci would be doing as good as it did if it weren't for the fact that literally TikTok is like mine, you know, and like are obsessed with it. I think this was a movie, I don't think it should have been in theaters only, especially if you were doing a limited release. I think you needed all the help you could get. And I think that doing theaters only, I think was a mistake. I think partnering with a streaming service of some kind, I know you were doing it with, with Fox and all of that, which is now owned by Disney and Disney's been doing kind of some weird shit. I don't know, I think this could have been a distribution error if we're not gonna blame marketing and we're, we're trying to figure out why you're blaming millennials. I need a clearer answer for why you're blaming millennials. The more I scroll through this Twitter, um, it's just, it's devolving into people criticizing the fact that they didn't wanna go see it. I don't know, it's more I'm seeing the responses to that. I'm not seeing the original claims, not to say that they weren't there. I'm just saying that's what I'm seeing, so that's what I'm interpreting here. I think that this movie would have had a better chance if it was better distributed or better marketed. For example, I think that uh, maybe doing a dual release or early release on say HBO Max or something, could they have done that? I don't think so because of Disney. I don't know. I just think that this movie maybe didn't have a fighting chance the way that it was released. And then whoever would have liked to have gone and seen it didn't really have the chance. And like now I would go see it, you know, not even just for this video. Like I would have liked to have seen this movie, but I can't <laughs> until it gets released somewhere else or on on demand. I mean, I'm gonna end this here. I really do think that this is just kind of gonna be the way of things. I, I think the discourse now is honestly doing more marketing for it than anything. But you know, now you can't go and see the movie. I don't. I don't get the apathetic millennial. I feel like I'm missing something. Apathetic millennials. I'm trying to think where the link, the leap could be for him, and I'm not seeing it. So anyway, that's gonna be it. Did you get a chance to see the last duel? Did you even know the last duel was out? Because I. I feel like I just missed the release entirely because it was just again overshadowed by Bond and Dune and the like. Would you have liked to have seen The Last Duel or were you just completely turned off because of the subject matter? Like let me know, comment down below. Reminder, I have the podcast, the Swell Shenanigans podcast. Uh, check out some shenanigans. I do new episodes every Wednesday. Go ahead and check out the merch, like that super cool cup back there. I have merch, it'll be linked down below. Shout out to my, all my patrons. Thank you so much for supporting me on Patreon. If you also like to support me on Patreon, it'll be down below. If like to follow me on my social media, that'll be all up here. And that's gonna be it. Have a lovely day, goodbye. Apathetic millennials. Thank you, Alan, Braden, Cameron, Christopher, Chris, Cody, Colton, Crash, PC, Destiny, Devin, Dirty One, Don, Elliot, Evan, Feckless, Hopeless, Hollow, Jekka, Ray, Joe, John, M, Jordan, Joseph, Kenny, Kevin, Kim, Kristen, Lamb, Lex, Lisa, Luis, Matt, Matt, O, Matthew, S, Me, Lord, the Red, Michael, Michael, J, Nathaniel, Pat, Pen, Prolog, Rob, Robert, Ross, Sam, Serena, Skylar, Simon, Stephen, Tasha, Timothy, Tom, Wendy, William, Zendry.